Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and to another Path of Exile video. I have still been regularly playing Path of Exile since the beginning of this league, contrary to what you might think looking at my channel. I've just not had any inspiration for another Path of Exile video until now. I present to you the early stages of a Viper Strike of the Mamba Pathfinder, a build originally put together by the one and only Ziggy D. This was one of the only new builds that really caught my attention, thus inspiring me to try it, and although it's still early stages, I have already felt like making a video about it. The only other new build that I wanted to play was a Volcanic Fisher of Snaking Juggernaut, and that turned out decent for up until low red tier maps, because the build was not SSF friendly, requiring too many specific unique items that I couldn't be bothered to farm so I dropped that character at level 85. But that's why this particular build is different, and why I'm already making a video about it, although it's not near being complete. And that's because this build has turned out to be very SSF friendly, being comprised of strictly rare gear and items that are fully farmable through maps, not having to worry about farming difficult bosses. I am now going to get into the summary of the build, this will not be a guide, if that's what you're looking for, then I suggest checking out Ziggy D's guide, which is extremely detailed, and you'll find everything you need there, and I shall link it in the description below. First things first, I'll tell you why this build is so interesting, and it's because it has a different take on poison builds, being that most poison builds try to stack as many poisons as possible and increase their duration. Whereas this build applies one massive poison that spreads like an ignite and we don't really care about the duration because it benefits us if we can reapply it. This is possibly the closest thing we have right now to a melee ignite build and it works really well. We utilise the Viper Strike off the Mamba to do this as this transfigured gem does what I have just mentioned with applying one big poison using melee and spreading it among all the enemies in front of us. Along with this we pair Plague Bearer for some extra boss damage and clearing speed, just in case our poisons missed some of the enemies that were just outside of our range. The damage of this build scales off of a few things that are easily accessible in a variety of ways, some more than others, but primarily all necessary scaling you'll need can be farmed or crafted. There are some obvious ones we get, such as all damage over time variations and multipliers for poison, chaos, ailments and claws as well as increases in how fast they deal damage. Flat elemental damage on our claws is pretty important and we also utilise frenzy charges and increased damage per frenzy charge. So all that is what you'll be prioritising when setting up this build, and once you have those foundations built up to a good standard, then we can focus in on farming more specific things. One of the most important ones comes from cluster jewels, and this might deter some people that dislike delirium, but personally I don't mind specking into delirium on the atlas and farming it for a bit. The cluster jewel that this build needs to double or even triple the total damage output is called low tolerance, which comes strictly from a medium cluster jewel with the implicit of increased chaos damage over time and it literally just increases our single poison application damage by another 300% per allocated skill. So what we'll try to do is find two or three of these cluster jewels with this specific perk and stack them all together to possibly increase our poison damage by 900% or more. Some other notable added passives alongside low tolerance you will want to look out for are brood potency, exposure therapy and flow of life. The other important thing you'll want to secure in this build is a really good tincture from the Warden of Eves in the Affliction mechanic. This particular tincture you'll want is one with the implicit Poison Berry, allowing all damage to poison, and a prefix modifier of Virulent, preferably a tier 1, which increases the damage of poison you inflict upon non-poisoned enemies by up to 300%. That is by far the most important prefix and implicit you'll need on it. Other than that, it is sort of up to you what else you want, dependent of where you are within the build. Some good ones I recommend are the following. For the implicit, you can also go with Oak Branch, which gives you Culling Strike. And for the prefixes and suffixes, you can also go with plus 0.1 to 0.6 meter melee strike range. 
6 to 25% chance to gain onslaught for 10 seconds on a killing blow, 10 to 40% chance to gain phasing for 4 seconds on kill, and damage penetrates 4 to 12% chaos resistance. Moving on, we want a Searing Exarch Implicit on our gloves that allows non val skills to strike one additional enemy. This just allows us to spread our poison more effectively and makes the gameplay feel more smooth. This particular Implicit is really easy to get since you can get it from the lesser Eldritch Embers. Another thing is that we drop Caustic Ground below rare or unique enemies because we curse on hit with the Alchemist mark and this is really nice for some extra boss DPS. So investing some points into increased effects of marks is also quite useful. Lastly, we try to convert as much physical damage to elemental and chaos since that is our damage source and I want to mention that the debuff the withered is also really important for our overall damage output but we don't have to worry about sustaining withered stacks on our enemies because of our ascendancy providing us with a 25% chance to inflict withered for 2 seconds with our hits paired with the ability withering steps which outright inflicts 6 withering stacks onto enemies within our close proximity. The tankiness of this build comes primarily from the Pathfinder Ascendancy, which is no surprise as this Ascendancy is one of the tankiest as it stands in the current meta. So a lot of our defense stems from various flasks. A really good life flask is the foundation of everything and elemental resistance flasks such as a taste of hate are also important. The reason why we want a really good life flask with loads of raw health recovery and quality is because we smartly utilize a bunch of layered mechanics to give us some insane life recovery and tankiness. This all starts with the Pathfinder Ascendancy, specifically the Master Surgeon node, allowing the life flask effect to not end even while we are at full life and giving us the bonus of life flask effects do not queue. Then pairing this with the ability petrified blood that applies a buff protecting the lower half of our health, preventing some of the immediate life loss when damaged by hits and instead applying that damage as over time. We therefore also invest into less damage taken over time in our tree and items which all together results in us being able to tank hits we could not of without layering these mechanics and making us significantly more tanky than what we would have been without a really good life flask and petrified blood. The other flasks that boost our defences are elemental resistance ones and these would be matched as you would require them so if you're going up against content that deals primarily fire or cold damage then you would want a fire or cold resistant flask. There are however some exceptions such as a taste of hate because in the current state of the game this flask is actually really powerful for all types of content and if you have managed to get your hands on one of these then I would suggest to keep it equipped at all times. Times. Luckily for myself I did manage to find one about a month ago and I've been using it on nearly all my builds but it pairs particularly well with the Pathfinder and this build since we boost our flask effects so much. The reason why Taste of Hate is so good is because it converts some of the physical damage we receive into cold damage and boosts our cold resistance at the same time. This just happens to be really powerful in the current state of the game because we take a lot of elemental damage. This is also exactly why there are other really popular items such as a lightning coil because once again it converts physical damage you take into lightning damage but from what Ziggy D has said a lightning coil is actually not sought after in this build. If you'd like to know exactly why then I suggest listening to Ziggy D's explanation to this in his video. We do however want to go for as much physical damage taken converted to elemental damage wherever we can because this will generally boost our defense as I've mentioned. Getting these can be a bit more tricky though as you'll primarily get these from jewels in your tree or in your armor from dropping it or crafting it. But generally these sorts of mods are more rare to see so it might take a bit of endgame crafting to get a chest such as this one. Lastly to finish off the defences section you'll want to look out for pretty typical things that most builds want which are things like life, evasion, armour, spell suppression, ailment avoidance slash immunity and life regen slash leech. So this is generally how this build works and I really wanted to share it with you guys because I just think it's so interesting. There are probably many things that I've missed out in this build during this video but once again I myself haven't even completed my version of this build.
I know that for example, Ziggy D also uses a raised spectre with meat shield and a guardian blessing linked with malevolence to further increase his DPS and defense, but I still haven't sorted that out yet. Regardless, I think I've done some really good progress so far. As of the making of this video, I am level 89 and I already have more effective hit points than Ziggy D himself, about 88,000 compared to his 69,000, but that's because I don't even have a quarter of his damage yet. I'm now at a point where I've secured my foundations of the build, but I need to farm for the specifics such as cluster jewels and a tincture to double and triple my damage to get to those numbers in the millions. Ziggy D's final build setup is reaching upwards of 6 million total damage over time, whereas I'm only just reaching the 1 million mark. So I need to buckle down and farm some delirium and affliction and some other mechanics to get those right items. And I also need to focus on starting to craft my best in slot armor and weapons through endgame crafting. Anyway, that's it for this video. I really hope you have enjoyed this topic and I hope this makes more people want to try out this fantastic build. Other than that, I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you all have a wonderful evening, night or day and I'll see you around.